Just setting up a dedicated mastering session will likely improve your final master. And this is for two reasons. First and foremost is because it forces us to think of mixing and mastering as two different processes. And that's important because they are. When we're mixing, we're focusing on everything going on in the track. When we're mastering, we're focusing on just that final stereo file and making sure that it's gonna hold up against other commercial releases. And if you're working in a project of multiple songs, making sure that they'll all sit well together within that project. And then two, a dedicated mastering this session allows us to do a few things that lets us really focus in on the mastering process. We'll look at that a little bit later in this video, but for example, we can lay out all of our songs that we're going to have on a project together and listen to how they'll flow together and make sure that all those transitions are going to be smooth. We can also compare our mastered version up against our unmastered version and make sure that there's nothing we're losing in the master so the master is actually sounding better and not just sounding different or louder or more processed or whatever you might be hearing if you try to do it inside your mixing session. So in this video, we're going to walk through the entire process from exporting out your song to create a mastering session and then how to set up a mastering session to have all these different components easily and in just a few minutes. Okay, let's jump into Logic. So our first step is to export out our song from our mixing session. Before we do that really quick, I just wanna play a little bit of this song so you know that I'm someone that you might wanna learn from. I think it's important that you like the sound of the music of the people that you're following so that you're not following someone teaching you stuff when you don't like the way their music sounds. So hopefully you enjoy this. By the way, if you haven't been following along, this is a song that we just finished mixing together. I've gone through and done a few minor mix revisions. So if you've been following along with that series, this is going to be kind of the before and after. We're going to compare it to the static mix here, which is just our level set. And then the final mix that has all the EQ and compression and all that stuff going on. So check it out the mix first, and then we'll jump down to the static mix, which is kind of the before. Instead of crying at the table Instead of giving out the names Instead of lying that you're stable Instead of pushing it away it's just to get out, yeah, it's just to get out Out of the figure Now you say you're proud, yeah, you say you're proud Okay, so just to give you kind of an update on where it's standing, I think a big improvement over that static mix. And again, these are just the fundamentals. If you don't already have my six step checklist to a pro mix, that's the process that we just followed to mix this in real time on the channel. Go back and check out those videos, but also be sure to grab the six step checklist to a pro mix for free from link in the description below. It just goes through this process. It's the same six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them specifically inside Logic. It's really gonna help you out if you're struggling to get a final result that you're happy with. You have to get the mix right before you move on to mastering. So definitely go through this six step process and then come back and go through this mastering series with me. But let's go ahead and jump into exporting out. So the first thing you need to do is set your cycle region to be at the actual start and the actual end of the song. So if we go to the beginning here, I just made sure that I had everything. Basically the way I like to do is just find just a little bit before the first hit. So for me, it's just a little bit before bar two just enough so that we make sure we're not cutting anything off. And then at the end, you just wanna listen through and make sure that everything has enough time to ring out. And you also might wanna consider using your master track here to automate down a fade out just to make sure that everything fully has faded out by the end. If you aren't seeing your master track, it's just Command, Shift, and M on the keyboard will hide or show the master track. So be sure to set that just a quick fade out at the end just to make sure that it sounds right at the end. I think a lot of people skip over that. Okay, so with our cycle region on, you wanna be sure to turn that on. Now, before we bounce this out, you wanna turn off any sort of limiting that you put on. At the end of the last video, we talked about using a limiter to bring it up to a more commercial volume as we're doing our mix revisions, we wanna go ahead and turn that off because that's a step that we're going to do in the mastering process. So turn off any sort of limiting that you have. I'm also gonna turn off my level meter. I'm sure there's no actual sound impact from this plugin, but I just turn off anything that doesn't need to be on. It's kind of a, a paranoia thing, I don't know. Anyway, and then you just wanna hit bounce on your master track here. You can see this in this window by hitting I, or you can go over to the mixer window and hit this little B and C in the bottom right corner there. And then we just wanna make sure that we're bouncing out a PCM that you have wave selected, 24 bit, and then whatever the sample rate of your session is, is fine. And then I like to turn off dithering for this. We'll turn it on when we're exporting out our final master. Dithering's complicated, it doesn't really matter. All that you need to know is that you don't need it on in this phase, but you do wanna have it on for your final master. So we'll turn it off here, and then we'll have offline bounce, 
And because I set my cycle region, you'll see this is roughly the time of my song. If you don't set your cycle region or if you have a selected a region of audio, then it's just going to do that or it's going to do the entire length of the session pretty much. So be sure to set your cycle region and you should, should see the appropriate amount of time for just your song. We'll go ahead and hit OK and pay attention to where you bounce this out because we're going to need to go find it in just a second. Once it's finished bouncing out, we're just going to create a new session. We'll close this session. And then in this session, we just want to create an audio track. And then we need to go to our finder and find where we just saved that bounced version of our song. So be sure that you're clear about how you're titling your track so it's easy for you to find it, whatever makes sense to you. And we just want to bring this into the new mastering session. But right off the bat, we also want to go ahead and take it and hold Option on the keyboard and drag this down to create a duplicate of this. And what I like to do is call this top one Unmastered and we'll mute it and we'll call this one mastered. And that way anytime throughout the mastering process, I could quickly solo the unmastered one just to quickly tell if I'm making progress in my mastering, if I'm liking what I'm doing and not just that I'm changing it, as I said before. Okay, so the second thing is to bring your song into the session. The third thing we need to do is bring a reference track into the session. So a reference track is just something that we can quickly reference to make sure that we're gonna stand up against commercial releases and or other releases that are out. So in this case, I'm gonna bring in the last single from my band so that I know that it's gonna hold up against recent releases for us. I will also typically bring in one, two, three other professional masters to compare it against. I'm not gonna do it in this video just because of copyright strikes and things like that, but you wanna have if other releases that you've done so you know it will stand up against your other releases and then other professional mixes that you can quickly reference again against. And then we just wanna mute that track as well. So this is gonna be one of our references. This is our master track that we're gonna be focusing on. And then if you have other references, you'll just put them down below this and mute all of them. That way, if you don't have anything muted, you're hearing your master track, and then you can jump into one of these soloed tracks to either hear your song unmastered or one of the reference tracks. Okay, so with nothing else soloed, the next thing we wanna do is go on ahead and run the mastering assistant. Now, we're not mastering our song with the mastering assistant. I'm gonna teach you a process for getting a better Better master, in my opinion, than the mastering assistant will typically give you. But it's kind of just like having a second mastering engineer master the song, and then you can compare yours up against this AI mastered version and just see what you like better. And if there's anything you like from theirs better that you want to try to do in your master, it's free, so why not do it, right? But we're going to go ahead and turn that off. And then the last thing we're going to do in this setup is under metering, we're going to pull up the multimeter. And this is just a great way to know everything that's going on inside your master. I've done an entire video where I talk about this plugin, I'll link to above here. But this is gonna be the meter that we're gonna keep an eye on, especially when it comes to making our song loud so that we know how loud we're getting with our mix. But also as we're comparing the frequency response of our mix against our other reference tracks, this meter is gonna allow us to do that. So I can now just have this meter up. I can listen to my master just once I get into it. Just, just and then I can quickly solo this other master. <laughs> and compare tonally what I'm hearing, volume-wise what I'm hearing, just to make sure, again, that they're gonna stand up against each other in a final released version. So that's how you set up a mastering session. Now, in a second, I'm gonna show you if you are ever working on an EP or album, how to lay that out in your session. So stick around if that's interesting to you. If not, then this video is done for you. But it's important that you set this up. You actually take the time to do this because it's gonna do two things. One, it's gonna shift you out of mixing mode. It's gonna make you focus in a mastering mode, which means that you're gonna make sure that you get your mix done before you bring it in here because it's a real pain to keep going back and forth between the two. And two, it's gonna mean that you're really focusing in just on what you're doing in mastering and you're not kind of jumping back and forth between mastering kind of and fixing it in the mix and just letting that be nebulous. If you treat it the way that professionals do, which is that you have a dedicated mixing engineer, a dedicated mastering engineer, you're likely going to get a better final result. This is a simple process, it's a simple setup, but it's important to do this and next week we're gonna be using this setup to actually go through the mastering process. So definitely come back for that. And if you don't already have it, be sure to grab my six step checklist to a pro mix from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. It just goes through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how to do them specifically inside Logic. If you've liked any of the snippets you've heard of this mix, then you're definitely gonna appreciate that checklist because it's the exact process that we followed on this channel in real time. So you can see me go through it and you can use that checklist to guide you through the next time that you're working on a mix. But anyway, let's jump over to an EP mastering session so you can see how I lay that all 
all out. Okay, so here we have an EP mastering session, and this is a little bit different because two of these songs were mastered and released as singles first. So the way I've set this up, I have this song that was already mastered, so I brought in the mastered version of that, and then I brought in the first unmastered song, and I set up my mastered track and then my unmastered track. And then this song was mastered, so I just brought in the final mastered version of that. And then I brought in the next song that was unmastered, and I have a mastered version and unmastered version. And then finally, the last song, it's an EP, so it's just five songs. We have the mastered and unmastered versions. And then throughout, I have reference tracks that correlate to the different songs. So uh, I could quickly go between this song, this master here. <laughs> and check against this other release. And those are pretty different songs, but they you can get a sense just that if those were back-to-back -back in a playlist, they're not going to be like, oh, God, that sounds way off compared to that other song, right? So that's the idea here is basically that you can lay them out as if you were just going through all the songs so you could listen through this from start to finish and I can check, like, how does this transition from the end of this song? How does it naturally transition into the next song here as we get into it? Does that sound right volume-wise? Does that sound right tonally, right? Same thing as I get to the end of this song here. Right, I can make sure there's the right amount of space. So one thing I'm also checking is how long do I want it to be before that next song starts so I can feel for that. And then the way I set my uh, cycle region is just basically making sure that I have the right amount of length. So I sometimes will go a little bit past where the song actually ends so that it goes into the next song at the right moment for me. Uh, so you can get really intentional with it and then you're listening to the tone across all the tracks and then I have the mastering for each individual track on these individual tracks and then I have on my stereo output the one meter that I can listen or pay attention to all the mixes and all the masters through, make sure that they're all looking and sounding right and are hitting roughly the same luffs and all the different volume scores that you want to be paying attention to and that the EQ analyzer is looking roughly appropriate across all of them. There's nothing really glaringly different. I can look at all that information very quickly with just this one meter that's set on my stereo output here. So that's the way I set up an EP mastering track. It would be the same for an album, just obviously with more songs. And you can see that it's just more helpful than just doing this in each individual session. And at the end of the day, it's actually gonna be much faster doing this in one session as opposed to going into each individual session of a mix and trying to just do your master there, export it out, check it against all the other songs. This, in the end of the day, is actually gonna save me a lot of time. And it's gonna get me a better result, at least in my opinion, in my experience. Okay, so hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, be sure to like it. It helps other people see it. I know that we haven't even gotten into mastering yet, but I promise next week we're going to do a deep dive into mastering in Logic, so definitely come back for that. If you don't already have it, be sure to pick up the six-step checklist to a pro mix. It's really going to help you out. And I'd love to hear from you. Have you been setting up mastering sessions, or have you just been doing it inside your mixing session? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week where we'll deep dive into mastering. One thing